Hello and welcome to the Virtual Frontier, the podcast about virtual teams created by Virtual Team. Disclaimer, all of our interviews are conducted virtually. I'm Daniel, your host, and I'm part of the team here at the Virtual Frontier. In this episode, I have the great pleasure to talk with Dr. Florian Ilgen. I was waiting for this chance since 2018 when I first discovered Florian and his work. Florian is a famous mentalist and a digital influencer. So I can promise you, we are expecting some magic to happen while we take off to his world of intuition. I talked with Florian about how his speaking and event business crashed during 2020 completely and how he magically reinvented his business in record time. We also speak about why passion in our personal and business lives is crucial and how we can get a more systematic approach when it comes to the real power of intuition. A quick mention of our sponsor, FlashUp. Build your virtual team systematically and methodically. Scale with your business at any time and make work better. Learn in our free training how you can build, grow and scale your business with virtual teams and global freelancers. Visit flashup.io slash start to get free access to our virtual business builder training. For our international community, this is an English episode and you can find the transcript of this conversation now in more than 10 languages on our blog at Happy Scribe Public or watch the video with subtitles for this episode on our YouTube channel. If you like the show, subscribe on YouTube, review it on Radio Public, follow us on Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, Google Podcast or any other platform you use to enjoy podcasts. You can also engage with our community on Discord. All the links you can find below in the description. So, without further ado, let's dive into episode 37 of the Virtual Frontier. Enjoy the conversation. Yeah, hello Florian. I'm very happy to have you today on our show, on the uh, podcast of the Virtual Frontier. Um, I, I was really looking forward uh, to have this conversation with you. And um, yeah, for our guests that... Uh, that don't know you, um, might you want to uh, introduce yourself uh, a little bit? I really like the career path that you have uh, taken the last couple of years. Um, it's quite distinguished uh, from many. It's not uh, straight from um, <clears throat> your original field of uh, chemis uh, chemistry. Um, but yeah, please take it ahead and, and uh, make your introduction. Daniel. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, but my name is Florian Ilgen. I'm a keynote speaker. I used to be a mentalist, means mind reader. And um, <laughs> you introduced me or you gave a small hint about my, my background. Actually, I'm a chemist. I studied chemistry. And um, while I did chemistry, I came across a, um, a magician in Australia, actually. And he pretty much, he injected an idea into my mind that I love to entertain people. I love to thrill people. I love to amaze people. And magic became a hobby. And actually, I turned this hobby into my profession after I finished my uh, PhD, after I graduated uh, my um, PhD in chemistry. Meanwhile, I don't do magic anymore. I'm a keynote speaker, motivational keynote speaker, means that companies apart from corona of course <laughs> not take into account uh, the effects right now um companies book me to motivate to thrill to um empower as well um their employees this is uh, my field number one and field number two is I help entrepreneurs and um, small to medium sized companies to generate leads um in a digital way that's that's pretty much it great yeah I, <laughs> I i i know that uh that you have left a little bit this um a field of of the mentalist and uh um the, the magic uh but I, I was wondering as we are working all in the virtual way um i have to get back a little bit to that um could you hypnotize uh, someone virtually like right now with me I was wondering um, that. I, um, I have to ask. <laughs> thing is, uh, well, theoretically, yes. However, it will take some time. <laughs> Usually, actually, I did um, I did hypnosis as well, 
I hypnotized people for show purposes only. Yes. So I'm not a hypnotherapist. So if you have issues with smoking, this is not my business. Um, <laughs> help <Got> yourself. <laughs> need some, need, need um, to get someone else. <laughs> what I did is I made people forget their names. Like they couldn't count anymore. They would drink water and would say it's the best red, red wine in the world. However, it will take some time. Like you have, um, what you see, for example, there's a massive misconception when you watch a um, hypnosis show on television, for example, and television is everything has to be on time. You don't, you don't have time to lose on television because time is money as in life as well, but in television even more. So what you see on television is just the end. You don't see the um, introductory point. You don't see the um, preparation. Like the audience is prepared. And the best, they're called subjects, hmm. are taken out and they're pre-hypnotized. Ah, before the show. Um, okay. Yes, absolutely. It's real. It's not, um, don't get me wrong. Hypnosis is real. I've been hypnotized. I couldn't say my name. I forgot my name. It's so funny. And you, uh, another misconception, people believe they sleep. It's not sleep. They are fully aware, but the state of awareness is slightly shifted. Mm. And um, so, going back to the TV show, so people are pre-hypnotized. So during the show, the hypnotist can just walk across a person, walk up to this person and just click his fingers and this, people, this, this person will go down under again. Oh. So that's what you see on television. It's real. It's not because most people say, oh, it's fake. It's just they were paid money. No, it's real. It's real. And it will take some time. So probably your uh, podcast um, listeners won't listen to the preparations. I would need to hypnotize you. Got it, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Next. But it's a very interesting. It's a very interesting field of science as well. It's, it's, it's science. Hypnosis, the hypnosis I did is show or was show, of course, but the background, the, um, the base it's, it's, it's planted on, it's pure science. What, what, what about reading, reading the mind of, of someone else in the, in the virtual environment? Or, or I, I know that, uh, you, you have like also like a, a um, specialty, um, to, to, to get to, to the through, uh, to the truth and, 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 in conversation, uh, um, Telling when people are lying, whatever. How how is that af uh, affecting the the uh, in in the virtual environment when when you don't have the physical presence and and um, have taken off some some of the um, how you say senses that you would not senses, normally yeah. use, right? It's um it's very um see the um reading mind or reading body language is possible um, on a virtual um, medium. Um, influencing people is more difficult because I would touch people. I'll touch you on, on the forearm and say, Daniel, oh, nice cap. I really like this. And, um, you could feel the touch mm. and your body releases oxytocin, for example, the social binding hormone. And it makes you feel good. That's what sales people do when you, when you go, um, you live in Mexico right now. Um, Uh, probably your shops are open and um, I don't know how the culture in Mexico is, but especially in the Mediterranean um, countries like Italy, like uh, Spain, people touch more. Oh, really? Greece, for example. Yeah. Just remember um, Greek waiters in Greek restaurants in Germany. They will touch you, especially when they know you will pay. Yes. So if you like uh, the pain the whole table, the waiter will, he's, he's a mind reader as well. He will spot the person who's most likely to pay, and this person will get special treatment <laughs> because, um, again, social and uh, scientific studies, people that are touched more tip more. So it's called the Midas touch. Midas, the king who turned everything into gold. Mm. In psychology, if people are touched, then they release oxytocin. They feel more comfortable, establish a connection. We would, we, the both of us would establish more connection. And when we have a connection, we tip more. We're more generous. We're more, we trust more. So this, this, um, this channel of um, impact is no longer there, of course. 
But um, of course, I can hear your voice. I can see your mimics. I can, um, I hear what kind of words you would use. So I can feel um, if you're in good mood, if you're in a bad mood, um, what direction, whether you're lying, for example. Um, and now you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Can you do this? <laughs> um, yes, it's true. Um, the, the, the touching effect is gone, of course. And um, people behave differently if we're just next to them. Yep. I, I, and yeah, that's something that's missing. I mean, you know, usually I do um, keynote speeches on, on big stages and, and the front row can always, almost feel me. And now I have, um, <laughs> I have digital conferences. Sometimes I don't even, this, like two, two weeks ago, I had a conference. Um, 400 people uh, in, in a studio. So everything was um, transmitted, which is a digital conference. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even see, usually when like, like now I see you, I hear you uh, on, my, on my PC and if you use Zoom conferences or meeting and team, whatever, um, you see the people, you see the faces. Yeah. And sometimes I have conferences, I don't see anyone. This is weird. Because I love stage and I love to thrill and entertain people. I love to have an impact on people. But if you don't get a feedback, this is new, cool. but we get used to everything. I yeah. Think, yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> um, as you just mentioned, uh, uh, your activities uh, as a keynote speaker, and of course, this uh, um, was really affected uh, during the uh, last year. Um, I asked uh, the, our last couple of guests always, um, how did you adapt uh, during 2020, 2021 um, to all this new situation, taking into account that you are really a guy that uh, lives from presence, uh, mm -hmm. touching people, getting like really in contact with them uh, while you're presenting and um, with all your other activities that you um, um, have on, on your plate. Um, how, how did you adapt? Uh, What, what you might have learned uh, in, in the last year. Um, so our listeners get a little bit an insight about how uh, different uh, personalities uh, have uh, tackled this uh, situation in the last year and get a little bit uh, an out outlook or a different uh, perspective. 2020 was a roller coaster ride. <laughs> roller coaster ride. This way around. Um, this was crazy. I'm... Um, Usually companies book me for shows or for keynote speeches, especially keynote speeches, two thirds are keynote speeches, motivational speeches. And this, the whole business just crumbled. I, my, um, my revenue was reduced by uh, 83%. <laughs> this was hard. And I started yeah. a new business. Like my, my business was fucked. It was really completely demolished. It was almost gone. And uh, to be honest, now it's, It's, it's uh, March 21. And I personally, mm. I'm an op, I'm an optimistic person. I'm an optimist, but I reckon the, the business won't be the same before 23, 2023. Even next year, we will not be at 75%, not even. I don't think so. Because even if we have vaccines and, and so on, People are still afraid to, to join a, um, join a room with 200 people. And usually I give keynote speeches in front of 400, 500,000, 5,000 people. People, even if they're vaccinated, there's still this doubt. And you as a company, if you host an event and anyone gets infected, you're done, at least to German law. Um, so people yep. will be afraid. So. The business won't return before 23. That's what I think. And I'm optimistic and I hope it will because I love stage. So what happened? Um, actually, Corona kicked my ass because, um, I got a, I got a big, what do you call this? Yeah. Kick in the ass because I wanted to start my online business three years ago. Actually, I wanted to do online courses, um, uh, workshops, online workshops. And now I had to <laughs> my problem was that my business was running too well. So I never, um, I never interrupted myself. And that's a problem you have, even if, if you're well off, even 
you know, every year we got more, more talks. I increased the um, price per talk every year and everything was fine. So I had no, there was no need to enter to, um, 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 to challenge myself. Now I had to because my business was gone and I had time. <laughs> so right now I'm selling online courses and I help um, entrepreneurs and um, small to medium sized companies to generate um, leads online on a digital way. Yeah. And, and it's, the thing is, it's amazing. Because I do search engine optimization, for example, mm -hmm. and I've been doing this for 13 years now. So that by search engine optimization, I generated my my talks, my shows, apart from um, recommendations, word of mouth, or television and stuff like that. But uh, search engine optimization was a big deal, and now I teach people how they can use how they become p position one on Google and get more customers and eventually more turnover. Mm -hmm. More revenue. Amazing story. Like from the um, chemistry uh, uh, 10, 10, 12 years uh, ago, um, and now you, you're like, uh, you're really in the online business and, and uh, yeah, having new ad ad adventures and, and um, also um, new challenges, right? And, and I love how, how, how you took the, the chance uh, during the last year. Um, uh, getting first kicked in the ass by by uh, the whole uh, Corona situation, and then uh, but uh, yeah, doing actually something um, out of the comfort zone, and um, at, uh, yeah, advancing with your your personality uh, and and your your business also. Um, I, I get so funny when you when you may I interrupt? Yes. Um, you know, we all know those super cool and smart lines like magic always happens outside the comfort yeah, zone yeah. and. You grow um, uh, on your um, what do you call this? Um, and then Grenzen am meisten wachsen. You grow the fastest on your um, um, obstacles, whatsoever. I don't know the um, saying in English. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all know those lines, those funny lines and fancy lines, and so on. During a during a crisis, you realize that those lines are true. 100% true. Probably all those lines, all those sayings were found during crisis. Mm. And now I like, like, um, I never learned more than last year. I never learned more than last year in so little time. And, um, it, it, you just go along. You just, you just do this. You don't think about this. It's a bit of struggle. Yes. But, um, I think it was good for me. It was good. I changed. I transformed. This was the biggest, the biggest learning I had during the last couple of years. Yeah. And it's true. Magic always happens outside the comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. And, 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 and for me, it was like the same, uh, a lot of learning, um, uh, new opportunities that I wouldn't have thought about before. And, um, it was just like, uh, as I think we have talked in, in a couple of shows before. Um, uh, about the situation that is uh, was happening last year, it was a booster and an accelerator for for things that, like as you mentioned, just with your business, right? You were really in a comfort zone, uh, had good income with your uh, speaking engagements and all this, and um, what, why why you should uh, do something differently, right? And now uh, there was a urge to do so, and uh, you did. What I think, and it is, comes all also to the next point I would like to discuss with you, um, what, what is really important there is um, having a, some, some portion of, of passion, right, in, in, your, in yourself and what, what, what you're doing. Um, could you explain a little bit, because I know that, uh, that you're also a passionate guy, um, why this is a key driver, um, why is it so important, and how could maybe businesses take advantage of that? I reckon passion is the fuel to any of us, even if you don't believe it. Even if people smile and say, yeah, passion, follow your passion. I heard the sentence over and over again. Thing is, um, people that are passionate are less likely to have a burnout. People that are passionate are more creative. People that are passionate connect more with other people because everyone, every human being, wants to deal with passionate people. Just imagine you have co-workers and some of them are passionate and others aren't. Who has problems? 
matters. People lack in passion. Mm. Because if you don't have passion, you focus on problems. If you're passionate about something, you have, you have a master plan in your mind. Your passion drives you by your vision and your mission towards a goal, and you will find a solution. If you are not passionate, you say, oh, I, this doesn't work because. This doesn't work because. If you're passionate, you find a way. So passion, to me, passion is the fuel to, to achieve our goals. Um, I, I did many, I did many different things. Like, um, I'm, I have a scientific education. My parents wanted me to become chemist, uh, wanted me to work in a laboratory. And actually, I was, and I'm, I still am very passionate about chemistry. I did my diploma, my um, doctor thesis about um, carbohydrates, sugars, and so on. And I still can draw you um, chemical structures. I'm still interested in chemistry because it was my passion. Because in school, my best subjects were um, arithmetics, physics, chemistry, biology. So all the sciences, natural sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved them. They were so easy. So this was my first passion. And I then I came across magic. Another passion. Um, hypnosis, passion. Keynote speaking, passion. Online marketing, digital uh, lead generation. It's all about passion. I hopped from one passion to a bigger passion. And I, st I do things that inspire me. If I'm, I'm quite digital, zero and one. If I don't like something, it's not, it's not working for me. I, I have to quit. If something is working, I'm fully focused on this and I really deep dive into this topic. And I'm like a sponge. I absorb knowledge about things I'm passionate about. And this is what, 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 what what um what is fun this is something that makes things easy for me and of course eventually you will have success with this so i answering your question yeah and reinvent sorry yeah. sorry go ahead no no, no you, it was interruption i, I thought you you are finished with your song the the ultimate goal is to re rediscover passion within ourselves, within employees. So, for example, I helped companies with my motivational talks that the employees see, oh, I am passionate. I have a passion for something. And because I realized when people are passionate, they're very likely to change. If you're not passionate, you just think about problems and you don't want to change. But, and this is interesting, and this is a paradox, um, some people, they don't like a certain thing. They stick to it. This does not make sense at all. Just imagine an employee that doesn't like his or her job. They could leave the job, but they don't want to. And that's a paradox. Only a few people say, okay, I'm fed up with that job. I quit. If you're passionate, you're either good in your job or you quit instantly. Because you have a vision about something. You have, um, you tell yourself, oh, I was born for something bigger, for something greater. So I can either I can change it or I leave. I, I would have two questions about that. How, how could companies or, or company owners or leaders uh, for, from teams, uh, um, how could they, um, develops in their team or, or nourish in their teams uh, a passion. Um, just thinking about like all the, the German uh, uh, speaking um, market uh, where I would say we're not really like the passionate guys, right? Um, especially <laughs> not, not, not in, 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 in the job uh, field or in the, in the um, corporate environment. Um, how we could go or, and, and be more passionate, more like the Latin style or the, the Uh, Italian style, where, where you see that also more in the daily life, right? It's funny. Speaking about Italian and Latino, um, it's, uh, maybe there's a, um, a diagram in between. Um, that's too easy. No, that would, that, it's too, um, that would be too easy. I thought about discipline and passion, mm. but I think there are many people that are passionate and disciplined at the same time. But I think we Germans, yes, we lack passion. You can see that 
when people, when Germans dance or make jokes. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a little passion about this. Um, um, that's different. Yeah. I've been, because you live in, 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 in Mexico and, um, I've been to Colombia and Nicaragua and Costa Rica and you see how the people dance, how they live. That, that's a lot of passion. That's, that's a lot of passion. And I was wondering, it's a cultural thing. We Germans, we, we limit ourselves. We are so disciplined and we we hamper our, um, we reduce the ability to, to have joy. We put joy on materialistic things, on value, but um, there's more, there's much more. And companies can um, help the employees to increase their passion by just allowing passion again. Because we had passion before, every one of us, when we were young. When we were kids, we were passionate about things. We climbed trees without having money hanging in the trees. And we, don't, we didn't go there for money, but just for the joy. We played for having fun. And as adults, as um, 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 grown-up human beings, we have to reinvent this passion again, which is easy. It's not, it's not difficult. We just have to take away our uh, burden, our... Um, self-imposed limitations mm. and the company can do this using three different things very sim simple just three things there are more to it but the three major things are very clear very simple um if companies implement this it's very likely their employees are more passionate number one is to have a very a crystal clear vision a vision where people are going what is our goal what is our um uh, mission and of course vision and this has to be um, a rational thing on the one hand but the vision has to include a emotional basis as well like um, when i speak about vision and goals i'm not speaking about money revenue turnover conversion rates and so on that's all the logical part but the emotional part the the hard part is how can we help our customers mm. how can we increase how can we increase the, um, the quality of our employees' lives? How can we increase the, um, our contribution towards the environment? That's something that's not rational, but it helps to follow a vision. If you know what I do helps my customer to succeed, I'm more motivated and I can develop passion. So number one is vision, very clear, very straightforward. Number two is communication. We have to communicate in a way that our employee, employees understand why we should change. I'm speaking about change right now because change and um, uh, passion, they're, they're highly connected. People that are passionate change a lot. And people that change a lot and are, are more agile, have more fun, like kids play around, and they develop more passion. Mm. So it's like, um, it's like a circle. It's like a catalytic cycle. It's interesting. So... Communication, um, I'm not speaking about sending emails, putting stickers somewhere. I'm speaking about uh, communication that people really understand on a, again, emotional basis. They have to understand why they should change, why they should live their passion. There's one example, but it will take, take too long. It's part of my, of my talk and it will take, I think, like 10 minutes. It's, way too long i we're gonna we're gonna link this talk maybe in our show notes so uh, people could follow up on that uh, uh later yeah, later on absolutely. Uh, because i find it quite interesting i, I guess uh and, and something which is also more like german style is that we probably look also um every time for the perfection in passion right um so oh, it, yeah. it, it, everything has to be perfect before we get into passion Uh, but it's uh, all the all other way around. Uh, uh, be passionate in the first in the first place, and things will get uh, probably more easy in, on the way. It's our. Um, I think it's good and it's bad at the same time. Mm. I mean, I don't know number one which number we are um, in the world when it comes to economy. Like we produce uh, many goods we manufacture cars and we are no germans are, like i've been traveling a lot and i realized what to be german means like oh you're so organized you're so structured you're so 
um, disciplined and per perfectionistic and so on and so forth. However, it's interesting. My mom put a, um, a note, not a note, like a, a picture over the entrance of uh, the house, like when you, before you go out and it says, um, perfection is the enemy of happiness. And I guess it's true. Yeah, there's some truth in it, yes. Mm. When you try to be perfect, you don't play like a child anymore. Children are perfect already. But we want to bring perfection into everything. And it takes away the joy, the joy and the happiness, and eventually the passion. Yes, we are like this. And we can learn a lot. And But that, that's something I see in um, first tier um, areas, top management um, um, uh, constellations, they start to realize that it's not all about money and perfection, but it's about, it's about, um, it's about, wait, so, <laughs> actually I put it on, I put it on uh, do not disturb, should put it on flight mode, my mobile phone. And it's so funny. Who did I talk about right now? About my mom. And right? Remember? No right there Guess she was. Guess who called? <laughs> it was my mom. <laughs> it's coincidence. Nice. That's nice. Um, where was I? <laughs> um, ba -ba -bum. Perfection. Yes. Perfection. What else? Oh, yeah. Um, leading managers understand it's not just about how to earn the biggest amount of money, but at the same time to con contribute something mm -hmm. to a bigger uh, purpose and to, to have time for the kids, to have time for yourself, to, to feel something, to feel good, basically. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I guess, uh, especially during the last year, uh, where we were all put together in the same, in the same situation, um, like staying at home, um, even if you're a CEO of a big company, uh, they probably uh, ha had spent a lot of lot more time with their family and uh, um, their kids maybe in, uh, during this time. And um, a lot of them uh, rediscovered uh, some some of the value that they uh, that it brings and and say, okay, maybe we should uh, be more inclusive in our daily uh, operations with uh, um, those aspects and. As well, like just mentioned, it's not just uh, about uh, the, the hard money and, and the growth of the company itself. Uh, it's all the, the environment that counts also in. in um, I want to uh, um, dive a little bit in, into the topic of, of your book, uh, which is also connected uh, um, uh, with um, uh, passion and uh, this topic in general, where we not really have the ability sometimes to to grab on it. Um, the the book um, of you is called "The Power of Intuition," and um, first of all, I would like to ask yourself uh, um, about what what is intuition, how how you define it, and and what is it probably not. What is it not? Very simple. It's not some esoteric bullshit. <laughs> It's number one. Intuition is not something, because there's so many myths around mm -hmm. intuition, intuition is not something magical, mystical, um, esoterical, or limited to women. Because people say, oh, there's female intuition. There's male intuition as well. Actually, men and women have the same amount, if you can measure intuition by amount, have the same amount of intuition. However, women are more comfortable are um, using intuition as a um, point of um, argumentation. So what is intuition? Intuition basically is the, um, the whole um, treasure of knowledge we acquired during we've been here on this world. Like all the knowledge, all the ideas, all the situational knowledge, what to do in a situation, that we have acquired directly or indirectly, indirectly by um, um, documentaries, by stories we were told, by um, experiences other people had. And this is the knowledge, the treasure of intuition. And combined with this is the ability that we can access this treasure chest within 
a fraction of a second to take a good decision. So just imagine um, a firefighter in a house and the house is burning and he has to know how long can he stay in this in this house before it will collapse. And you know, he can read many books, he can measure something, but this won't apply, this won't help. So his intuition will tell him or her that she can stay a bit longer or leave the house. So intuition is something we learn. So the older we get, the better our intuition on a specific topic grows. Just imagine a, a lawyer, a lawyer who has done, um, or what is called prosecutor, mm -hmm. I don't know, Richter in, in English? Judge. Right? Um, judge, thank mm -hmm. you. I was like in a sort of judge. A judge, for example, the, the more cases he had or she had, um, the better he will take in, in, intuitive decisions because he will detect liars much easier. He will learn from experience, from mistakes. And uh, so to, to sum it up, to round it up, intuition is a treasure chest and of all our experiences and the ability to access this treasure of information within a fraction of a second for us to take better decisions in life. As we, so nothing mystical, it's just scientific again. Yeah, as we I want to demystify the whole thing. Yeah. Completely right. As in, as as it is uh, demystified and 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 do as you just uh, uh, laid out, um why we often deny to, to use this intuition in, in our in our daily life or at least to to commit that we took a decision on intuition. Uh, and, and probably how could we uh, approach better in those cases and say, okay, we, we did use intuition for, for decision-taking or whatever part of life. Again, I'm so happy that we see big changes here because mm -hmm. many years ago, for years long, people had difficulties to use the um, intuition to judge things or to... to um, argue using your intuition. Again, women for women, it's easier to use this uh, form of um, proof to how, why did I take this decision? Yeah, because I felt it. Uh, men had, so far, had difficulties using this, but again, like top, um, top managers, um, politicians, even sportsmen, you know, sportsmen, they have to feel the, they have to feel where the ball will go, what the uh, opponent will do. It's all about intuition. And as the, um, the Western world loves technology and rational um, argumentation and things, it used to be difficult for us to just rely on our intuition. But, you know, we get more and more aware of things. Uh, awareness is a big, a big thing. And um, feeling. Like, uh, I mean, you know, even now top managers um, admit it like, yeah, I, I always took my decisions on an intuitive basis, but I wasn't allowed to use, to say this, to admit it. So I created some rational um, arguments around it. Not arguments. What do you call this? Argumente in English? Or is argumente. Is it argument? Because the argument is a fight as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Should be fine. Everyone will understand, hopefully. <laughs> how how could we how could we like in in the corporate environment rediscover this uh, um, this intuition uh, um, to to a force of good uh, uh, at in advancing um, with, with our business operation. Um, with the environment inside the company, um, between the colleagues uh, and, and co-workers. Um, so we take advantage, you, you just uh, mentioned it, uh, like some top-level manager would have taken years uh, his, his decision on an intuitive basis, uh, and never admit to it, uh, and uh, now it's getting better. But is there is there any way to do it more systematically, uh, getting the full the full package out of it? Absolutely. Um, like described in my book, you need two things 
to be more intuitive and to have the results you want in your life. It's very simple. Number one, if you want to use your intuition, you have to have a good self-esteem. You have to believe in yourself and you have to make yourself independent of, the, um, of what other people think and say. Only then you will connect with your intuition. Because if you depend on what other people say and think about you, you are um, um, deaf, I think. Taub? Mm -hmm. Deaf? Yes. Deaf towards your own intuition. Mm -hmm. If you make, if you liberate yourself, if you make yourself free of the judgments of other people, only then you have an ear or you have a sense for your intuition. So number one is self-esteem. Again, and you see how the topics are connected. Yes. The more passion you have, the more self-esteem you have because you do the things you want to do and you listen to yourself and not what other people say. Because if you always listen to what other people say, it's very unlikely that you will follow your own passion. You will follow their passion, but you're not your own passion. So this is the um, interconnection between those topics. So self-esteem, number one. If your intuition told you something, then you have to have the courage to take a decision. Because, I mean, it's nice if your intuition tells you, hey, Daniel, um, you have a good job, but it's not what you were meant for. And you say, yeah, intuition, I, I understood, but you don't take action. So we need self-esteem to listen to our intuition. And to tell other people, hey, I just felt this. This is my intuition, number one. Then number two, you have to have the courage to take the leap, the leap of faith. You have to trust yourself and just change things because your intuition told you. So those are the two concepts, self-esteem and courage. And you will listen to your intuition and you will act upon it. And the best thing is, if we act upon it, you will have a good result. And this result, again, feeds our self-esteem. So, again, it's a catalytic cycle. I was just thinking. And you see, the better, res the better results you get, the more your um, self-esteem will grow, and hence, the more you will listen to your intuition. And, you know, if you don't listen to your intuition, why should she tell you something? She won't tell you anything if you don't listen to her. Gotcha. Um As we were talking about this um, speaking voice in, inside your head, uh, there's there's also uh, often connected the ego. So how how we distinguish between the the ego and the intuition that is uh, probably talking to you? Mm. You have the ego talking to you. Um, that the ego is your limitation, and the intuition is your possibility. <laughs> Sometimes the um, what is a, a big issue is um, we um, confuse intuition, for example, with greed. Like uh, if you're greedy, if you want to do the deal, or if you want to earn more money, and there's this voice in your head talking to you, and you think, "Oh, that's my intuition." No. Pay close attention. Sometimes it's your greed. Sometimes it's your fear. And sometimes it even can be uh, love that you think, oh, that's intuition, but it can blind you, like love can blind you as well, um, if it's for different reason, if it's not the real love. Uh, so pay close attention. Is it really your intuition or is it just um, the greedy idea you have, just like this one, this one idea, this one um, thought? Yeah. Gotcha. As we are coming slowly to the end of the conversation, um, if there are people out um, and they say, okay, I want to listen to my intuition more, but, but I, I struggle to, to, to get uh, ahead and or, or the things uh, starting uh, or rediscover where, where the intuition is, is talking to me, what you would recommend, uh, what, is the, what are the first steps um, we just mentioned, like uh, working on the self-esteem, having a clear focus, um, and any more tips about that uh, so someone could like getting like started in, in a, with little steps uh, th uh, toward uh, a better better 
uh, intuition or the capability to to hear the intuition absolutely um the most important thing is if you want to listen to your intuition you have to um be in a relaxed state so if you're stressed from job from uh, other people i don't know what you have to relax you have to like meditation helps a lot to to bring you down um awareness helps a lot in relaxed states like after going for a walk in a park so on your um level of intuition will will or the accessibility towards our intuition will grow so this is you can you can uh, make it more likely that you intuit that you will connect to your intuition by uh, being relaxed by not having stress just being relaxed being aware being self aware that's number one number two is just try your intuition for example if you're on a bus if you're on a bus ride on a train ride on i don't know what um in a um social situation and you see people just just challenge yourself like in, on a bus just guess who will enter or who will leave the bus first guess if you talk to people before you talk to them before you do your um, small talk look at the people and take assumptions married yes no how many kids what kind of job uh where does he come from which country is this person from so you challenge yourself over and over again and you will realize that the the more often you do it the better you become and of course afterwards you have to you talk to the people and you have to um you have to um verify how good your assumptions were and this will increase your um intuition and you'll rely more and more on your intuition but you have to try you have again have to have the, the self esteem to take this decision and just um just try and do it over and over again really yeah. really interesting uh, I, uh, as you were just mentioning this this little exercise i, I was i was noticing that i'm doing it all the time <laughs> when uh, when i'm in connection with other uh, other people and and uh, but i, I never realized uh, that this is a, a intuition exercise it is yeah. yes you practice your intuition doing this you have to of course you have to control in the end otherwise you don't know how good your intuition were yeah was uh, you have to you have to confirm it afterward yeah right um, Florian, thank you very much for, for, for today, um, for our conversation. When people would like to get in contact with you, uh, you mentioned already your online courses that you're offering, uh, that your trainings, um, keynote speeches, how, how can they connect with you, um, where they can find out more. Um, so, um, we get this thing rolling. Of course, all social media, um, like LinkedIn, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and my homepage florianegen.com or .de um, yeah my my book so far is is in is in german my there's an audio book you can download it for free if you speak german if you don't then it's difficult but you can download my audio book for free it's on my homepage as well about the um, the power of intuition um, yeah that's pretty much the that's the way how to contact me or just Send me an email. And the title of your book is so easy to translate. When, when, when you want to work on the English translation for English uh, speaking listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. The power of intuition. It's very powerful. I, I love the title. Right, right. And, and <laughs> there, there are a few titles that you can just uh, uh, translate one to one from one uh, language to another, right? Um, yeah. That's true. Sure. Then, um, yeah, thank you again. Cool. Thanks a lot. It was a great pleasure for me. Yeah, me too. I really enjoyed talking to you. Hope I could uh, drop some nuggets and um, um, g give some value to your listeners. Of course. It was really insightful. And, and thanks uh, for the, taking the time again. And um, hope we can speak soon again. Talk to you soon again. All right. Bye, Flo. Bye. I want to thank Florian for taking us today to his world of intuition. I hope you enjoyed the ride. As a listener of the Virtual Frontier, you can grab a few copy of Florian's latest audiobook on his website. Also, you can find out more about Florian's work on his website, florianilgen.de. 
You can subscribe to the Virtual Frontier on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever podcasts can be found. And while you're there, you can leave us a review. Please support us on Patreon so we can keep improving the show and your experience. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. So until next episode, keep exploring new frontiers. Thank you.